save. We are on. I hope this sounds okay. It seems to be okay right there. I'm it. Maybe it's loud. Here we go. So, hello everyone and welcome back to another episode of our Languiser mobile series. And <laughs> this weekend is the weekend where I made it. Oh my god, it took so much effort. 50% uh, had to be defeated in order for me to reach Langrisser. But it finally did happen. I went all the way to Langrisser. Uh, it made me really happy because I really didn't think I could make it this season. Uh, until like 4-3 weeks ago I was still at 1600, gold 1, bottom tier. Uh, because I was trying super hard to turn into some sort of tank push strategy. It just, it's not my style, it's not what I'm good at playing at, and uh, it really showed in my matches and my losses. So right now I'm even technically within the playoffs, but of course, uh, as we get closer, probably the point requirement will get higher. I will make sure to farm some more. But what I did want to do today is go through the streak of matches that lent me down from almost uh, 1800 all the way up to Langrisser. So let's find... Okay, that's a bit too much. A uh, loss, a loss, I think that would be a good point. A loss here. A loss and a win and a win. Okay. Alright, so we will start somewhere around here. We are... Ah, yes, of course, the day. Here, 7-3. That is indeed correct. Yeah. So we're gonna review Sunday's games. And we're gonna go through them quite quickly. Because some of them were pretty cool and some of them were super close. So I'll be happy to examine what went on in them. So, anytime anyone bans anyone else that is not Ayaka, uh, I am uh, Akaya, different game. <laughs> I'm more than happy to pick her on my own. Uh, I've learned at this point to fear less juggler than Rosenciel. Rosenciel is ridiculous. Especially against uh, all of the debuffs that I usually try to inflict on people, and as soon as uh, someone like Rosensil is gone, I try to ban the longer legs that I can find. Uh, this gives me an opportunity to then fight from the distance that I feel comfortable at. <clears throat> uh, I see that the opponent is starting to pick some heals. I actually have stopped caring very much about the amount of heals that I face. Uh, it used to be a problem, uh, but it, it became less and less of a problem the more, um, the more power I could put through in a single target as well. That's why I also ended up including for this day Leon uh, and even uh, rushed and pushed my bikes to become level 10 uh, because well Leon can do what Leon can do right with the bikes he can maybe attack turn 1 and that is just ridiculously good. Uh, on a setup where not knowing the opponent's tanks uh, Leon is not a good choice though because you may face a Lancer Landius and then you deal 0 damage so I chose to go for Egbert in this case. And I thought maybe if I get to teleport people at the right time in the right place, it should be enough. So, into the game. I usually end up fishing for a Breeze in case I don't need to use Akaya's um, um, buff instantly. But I decided that even with the buff, it's a perfect opportunity to, um, to give PA the power that he needs to break through anyone else. So he gets the buff anyway, does not get the Breeze replaced, so you actually... Um, you actually keep the free mobility buff even through Akaya's buffing. And then I decided, you know what? I need to break last rights. So I'm gonna push for a little bit of damage. And then I regret doing that because I thought, no one, that's not gonna work. Um, Rachel is gonna be in range of me and then end up healing uh, everyone while losing everything I work for. So I decided to go back and not give that opportunity. And I thought, that Rachel, that Rachel is suspiciously uh, reachable. So how about I go to the woods and take out that Rachel? And then I say, bye Rachel, to meet you. I was fishing for a 50% health or lower heal, because I have that type of helmet on him. Uh, but in most likely scenario, he will be very, very dead from something like this. And that was correct, he was dead. The secondary purpose why I put uh, Egbert in that position is because it would attract exactly this, the damage from uh, from Mario so that none of my other especially good units could be hurt. Uh, Liquor is here showing herself in order to put some debuffs. Uh, it may have been a mistake because I would, could have wanted to heal out of this 
uh, with my own AoE. So I didn't quite see that coming, therefore I rescue Licoris first with the with the illusion and then I can actually try to give her an again. But before I do that, I heal myself and attack, even though I didn't get to move. Uh, some damage has to be made. And if I am lucky, I move him to a new position. But that's usually not the case. If all positions are available, you do not move your target. Now the wolf is gone. But that tells me maybe I should just attack him to juggler. Okay. And then that goes into a problem, but hey. Aka is actually uh, a horse, so it's not so easy to get her. I end up raining destruction on my teams, dealing quite some damage. And of course the fixed damage helps a lot. The rewind here becomes very key, so I have to make sure that they cannot use all of the tricks once again. I throw in a Meteor not touching uh, Juggler, because I want to make sure that the healing doesn't go their way. And I get, uh, I get the kill basically from Juggler's... Uh, sorry, not from Juggler, from... Uh, wait, 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 that went way too fast. I get basically the death from the illusion transformed into a wolf, which is very useful for me to use and act again. Uh, I think opponent here should have gone maybe for uh, Akaya. Um, but of course the health was so low that it made no difference. So check this out. Uh, opponent has now no heal. Also take extra damage on fixed, uh, sorry, extra fixed damage on movement. And honestly, I think acting again here may have play, played against them way too much. Even though they got to heal, which is kind of cheap, but that's what luck determines. So Mario kills himself, herself. Then I get to teleport uh, my own. That was that was actually a mistake. I could have done this way better. I get to teleport uh, Licoris. But Licoris is actually, um, but I, sorry, I could have chosen to move the wolf before teleporting Licoris. I was just too happy about the possibility, and I did not check that this guy had gotten a breeze trigger. So that was a little bit of mishandled by by me. Um, but what he's not noticing is that uh, without the water buff from Juggler, you don't get uh, you don't get the damage conversion. So basically, he had better chances of killing Ares than killing. Uh, than killing Licoris. Of course, there was also the chance that he wouldn't kill either, so I did not mind. Uh, Aka gets an attack, but thankfully it's not Lancer Landius. Lancer would have been immediately a kill. So I spread some evilness over to the right. I end up healing Sophia, but Sophia is actually quite hurt, so I'm not really worried about it. Aka falls, but she has done most of her job anyway. And then I realize this is a very strange situation. I should not attack. Hi, Becky Cuphead. Hey, Rupert. How are you doing? So I end up not attacking. I knew it was going to become my turn, and I knew neither of them had uh, put up the new tanking. So actually, they let me kill Sophia, and because Ares can move through people, and after that uh, he can move away, I chose to escape as much as I could. This would give time for my uh, for my Licorice actually, not just to heal up, but also to pass some turns because passing turns. Is Super important in case. I get to activate the trigger here, get to move, get to attack. Even though it's not, uh, it's without the actual skill to attack, it's still ridiculously good damage, and there's no reason I should say no to this. So, match ends up being over, and we start uh, a, an escalation. I'm of just wins. here to watch some Apex B. <clears throat> I'm trying to put up a good show then. All right, so that was uh, the first win of the day. Uh, and it may be quite inspired to then continue on and push as much as I could. So we go to the next match. Opponent has an Akka, and Akka plus some of the other rushed units here is just disastrous for me. So I'm happy they don't ban my Akka. They choose Rosential, so it makes my life quite hard. Um, but then I decide it's, it's better then to start removing some of the possible opponents that will make my life hard. And what I see here is that the opponent only has one tank, because oh, probably a rush style is what they're focusing on. That's why the Rosential pick was a little bit surprising to me. It, it really doesn't go together with, uh, with the rush style. Just subscribed with hey, Okami-san, thank you very much for the sub. Welcome back once again. 
13 month subscriber. Thank you very much. That's also my friend, so that's the secret. The secret is now up. Um, but I will gladly move to gold. Think thingy. There. I am old timer. <laughs> you, are, you are old. <laughs> Alright, where are we at? Wait. XDD. <laughs> Donation current. Three. Having to do this manually is quite the thing. Alright, so I'm not sure what my opponent is trying to do. They cannot move a lot. That gives me all of the advantages I need when I have the legs for the match. Uh, and honestly, I don't care that Rosensil exists in cases like this. Because uh, as long as there's no tanking capabilities there, then I'm not really scared. But what they do here, which is pretty cool, is give an Empire buff to their Florencia. I did not predict that, so I should have banned Florencia over Diana, for example. Um, but I'm not too worried. If I hurry, then um, uh, basically the again on uh, on Zerida trick will not work so effectively. Um, by buffing um, by buffing Shaltier after the fact, it gives me the opportunity to uh, have two turns. Of, uh, of movement rather than the one. I get to move quickly here, go for the first AoE, and I think I delete Zerida. Yeah. A lot of Zeridas are currently running Dagger, so I'm just happier getting in melee against them. I have EMB still on my on my HA. And then HA dies, I just don't care. The trade was very good, because now I have uh, most of the control over the battleground. Basically, I can find the distance at which I am okay staying away, especially with uh, someone like him. It makes it very easy to start like this. And because the first action from Rosensil was the, uh, the faction buff, makes it a lot easier for me to uh, land all of these debuffs that will drive people play. Opponent goes for an again. So I decide to go for a mass attack instead of going for the AoE. Mass attack here would protect me against silence. And because I, I landed a bunch of debuffs on him, the damage should not be super, super high. Especially with Chelsea's shield, it's not a problem. Having the opportunity then to act first, I destroy everything, Florencia disappears, and Rosensil is silent. This makes me super happy. Uh, the match takes a severe turn at this point. Okay, no silences can land because of mass attack, and with no silences landed, then I can just continue to pelt the way I do. All enemies die, except the one who has already acted. This match is quite, quite over. <laughs> but the triggers, the triggers are still going. So it's a pretty good show of why the superior mobility tends to win matches like this. Okay, so we go back to the start of the day. Win, win, then comes a loss. Gotta show the losses as well. Um, at this point, I was not at, uh, at Langrisser reaching. But whenever people ban my uh, my Akaya, I, I am in a strange position until tomorrow, of course, where we'll get Vanna. What I'm going to do to my box is I'm going to throw Vanna in there where Estelle used to be. Uh, I think Leon is right now taking that spot. And Verna is basically a better Jessica. Just enables basically everyone else. So I'm going to go for that. In any case, I first pick an Ares, which gets a response of, of Hobo, which I, I understand, but it's not really that threatening. I think people sometimes overestimate the capacities of, uh, of Hobo, especially on maps where there's a lot of flying tiles. Uh, on some maps, like the middle, center one, that all makes sense, uh, but on this one in particular, mm, do not agree. One of the biggest tricks against Hobo is to just remove all of the units that have somewhat of uh, an optional flying. Uh, like uh, Joshua here can carry something else other than, you know, the one thing. And uh, in case of Bozel and in case of uh, Licorice, you can just remove the flying troop, trade it for the Warlocks, which are still amazing troops, and go ahead. However, because I'm a very, 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 very smart person, uh, in this match I decide that I'm not going to look into the skills of Joshua and forget to change out his ninjutsu. So actually, uh, Hobo here performs all the role that he needs. But here's, here's why I picked Leon. So, let me show you. Ninjutsu? Ninjutsu. Ninjutsu, sorry. Uh, Leon with bikes is absolutely ridiculous. So, you have to be where 
in certain maps, Leon turn 1 can reach almost anyone. In this particular case, Leon has one tile here and one tile here, allowing you to go all the way. If you are mirrored, then you have to pick this tile, and then you are able to go all the way to here. And from here, you have actually the option to go up into another defensive tile, another defensive tile, and attack. So this position is threatened. It's actually the only one that is threatened uh, on turn 1 for this map for Leon. So if you're facing this, put your tank here or put the unit one tile away, or else something like this will happen. Uh, every time you see a Leon, count. Count like crazy, because things like this can happen and they will happen too. In any case, Diddly disappears. There are no more heals for the opponent. So I just try to blow up as much as they can from this unit. Uh, Julia heals herself and with faith everyone else, so I understand that. Uh, but there was nothing else really I could have done with, uh, with Leon. Uh, there was no escape. Really. So, Hobo begins painting, and this is when I notice, damn, I made, I made a mistake with Joshua. You will not have the capacity to go through things like I would have preferred him to have. I get the information of where Elwin is going to sit, uh, and I still try to calculate where can I sit while being in a good place. I find an opportunity here to throw some damage down, uh, since the, the summon is allowing me to Still shoot at it and then hide. That's pretty good. Boozle starts moving north, so I try to stay still away from uh, away from Elwin. And this is this is actually where I notice if only I had paid attention uh, and removed Ninjutsu, especially because Ninjutsu is useless here. In any case, I forgot it. I could have gone here. One, two, three, four, five. I could have hit someone, then won't come back. But I could have prepared for the next turn. There were a million options I could have taken advantage of if I had not dropped in YouTube. So what I end up deciding is to go north because at least I can move some tiles over there. And something that I keep forgetting to do is checking if actually uh, Hobo got uh, a clock trigger. So I never, n I'm never aware if that worked out or not. Uh, Varna it's one of the AoEs, sadly it's a clock, so her sacrifice is kind of in vain. But I find myself the opportunity to punch a little bit, and punch is what I do, so here we go. I move Joshua into a tile of, uh, of uh, protection, but I'm pretty sure that he's gonna go, exactly, that he's gonna go for uh, Zerida. And then I make yet another positional mistake, there was absolutely no need for me to put myself in such a weird position. And because I have Ninjutsu, why do I not use the tower? Anyway, the little bit extra damage would probably not have saved me or destroyed more than what it did. But I make sure that I destroy this Edwin. And uh, I do so in a position where, theoretically, I cannot be hit by, uh, by Bozel. But sadly, Edwin's only losing the first life because I'm, I'm here with the AoE of uh, Ares instead of the main skill. So I have to trade Varna for his life. Uh, I'm a little bit corralled here. Uh, there was a, a trigger from Yulia on uh, on on Breeze. There we go. Uh, but I get lucky because Joshua still has his protection. He doesn't die immediately. There's not a ton I can do here. I do kill the Bozo, but at this point I am in such an odd position because he gets to act again. I have to attack with Joshua. I have no more skills remaining and then all he has to do is shoot it once. It's still a very close match. I think if I had either not paid, uh, paid attention to the ninjutsu or used it then in the correct place once I brought it as a mistake, uh, things could have gone better because uh, Elwin would have died from Ares attack and thus Varna would have been alive and thus more stuff could have happened. But that's what mistakes do. Oh my god, I did not want to. That's what mistakes do, so... Uh, it ended up being a loss. Let's go on 7, 1, 2, 3. Okay, so I, I guess I am spoiling everyone by showing that it's actually a win. I will try to... Uh, you know what? I can actually hide it for next time before I show you if it's a win or a loss. What do I have to click? Alright, test. Yep, that's very successful. Okay, so, uh, I look at my opponent, 
and I ban the Rosential, I see that it's going to be possibly a tank and, and push match for them. Uh, but I see them picking first picking an Elwin, so I'm trying to make sure they don't have any of the follow-ups that immediately destroy me. Those people... Those, those two have ridiculously long legs. Um, and I see still that there's a, a Landford remaining, but there's not much I can do. I see also Maria. So there were really some serious options here for my opponent. Uh, even still a tank, because I'm, I'm so busy banning threats that I have to... I have to leave everyone else behind. Uh, but I have my own Ares. Uh, as soon as I see that I can ban uh, all of my opponent's painting skills, I love uh, playing with Liko. Uh, and here, here, with any type of Breeze trigger, from Liko especially, uh, Liko has uh, Tenyo's headdress, that's why, um, it, he becomes a one-man murder machine. So that's pretty good. In any case, I find myself in the weird position to have to pick a bunch of people I cannot buff, so actually everyone has to rely on themselves in order to deal the damage. This match will have absolutely no form because no one, neither of us is having a tank. Um, but I do have the slight superiority of my own Ares. And I believe, if I'm correct, that I brought Ares with uh, AoE? No, with single target. So my choice here was, if I get to someone, I should just disappear that person. I think that's a good choice. I started doing some math and I noticed uh, as long as I keep away from um, from the front line, then the possibilities for uh, for Clotaire go down a lot. If he were to move all the way to here, one, two, three, four, five, he would be only basically hitting Ares, who is wearing of course a last rights, which reduces in this case the damage of this AoE by 40%, and then whatever, fixed damage afterwards, probably not going to kill me. And um, because of this, uh, none of these three in the back would have been hit. EA would not have been hit because of the protection from AoEs. Uh, and Licoris would have been able to heal, that's why I brought specifically on her the healing and the 3C rather than uh, the damaging ability. So this is the reason why I also start spreading everyone out, because as long as I don't stay in the shape that he likes to destroy, uh, Clotaire will have a much harder problem. I tried to fish for a Breeze trigger here. And I don't remember if I get one. I do not. Uh, the, the healing trigger is pretty good on Hiei, so it's not the worst choice, but of course, uh, Breeze is always better. Opponent is able to add more movement to uh, Clotaire, but I'm really not worried at this point, because uh, in any situation, Clotaire will be able to reach me. So, opponent goes straight up for Hiei. I am hoping here for a survival, but it's very, very unlikely. Hiei doesn't have the defense, 40% uh, of the other of last rights doesn't make a difference here. Uh, Shaltier is absolutely able to destroy the first life of uh, Elwin, but sadly does not dispel the the buff immunity. So I have to go with a strange choice here. Um, I have to go here with uh, the 3C, and I use it because I don't know when I'm going to be able to use it effectively later. It gets me the kill, it gets me a good position, because if you check here, I think this is where the opponent makes a mistake here. Um, if you check here, Mariel was three tiles away, yes, it looks amazing, but then she can only move two tiles, because there's this mountain here. Stone pillars are not passable, they're not rough terrain, which if it was a mountain, for example, it would have been passable. Uh, so when the opponent gives Mariel an again here, I'm kind of happy because it seems like a mistake, and maybe something I can exploit later on. Uh, I still have my Ares, and right now I get to see some possibilities of what to do. So I try to spend some more time, and then I notice there's a problem here. Um, Clotter 3C also has a single target shape, and that's actually quite problematic for me right now. So Ares gets absolutely demolished, that's a mistake, um, but there was, there was not much I could do, he had a billion movement speed, and so do I. So at that point I decided I need some people to disappear right now. I start with Mariel. And then I move back all the way to see if I get the kill on Clotair. Sadly, this is an infantry, and infantry versus spears, we know how this goes. How this goes. And at that point, I believe Shaltier is a dead person, and that is fine, because I still have some opportunities here. I decided to put together my people, especially... Um, especially Aryan Rod and... Uh, and... Uh, oof, I cannot process right now. 
Arian Rod and um, Licorice are able to start buffing and doing things together, she still has the shield in physical. And because of this protection of sort, uh, I get to start blasting them with AoEs. Silence on Florencia here is huge and actually makes quite a difference. Uh, that was quite, quite lucky. I think I got a clock trigger, that's also pretty good. And because of this, opponent has to kind of start moving away, because, uh, sure, she cannot immediately kill anyone, but it's pretty strong what uh, what the debuffs can do. Alright, I get to shower them with a second one. This clock trigger was not necessary, at this point the game was over, but it still really secured the win for me. I was super lucky. Ah, uh, ah, uh, I said I would not show, so I... Alright, on to the next match. <laughs> now I don't know where I was. Yes, there, I found myself. Alright, match number, who knows, I guess five at this point. Opponent bans my juggler right away thinking, ha, without the tank he'll be lost. So I ban their means to rush. And I give myself the means to rush. Anytime my Ares gets banned and uh, my uh, Rian is not, I go for Rian. Right? Yes, good job, old me. So opponent picks a juggler thinking that AoE is going to be for fate, but to me juggler does not really present any problem anymore. Uh, it's annoying, of course, and sometimes I made losing choices out of that. But I have learned to deal with him a lot better, especially with a gift like Egbert. So Egbert here can follow two functions. The first one is he can teleport Reen forward to make sure that uh, he can explode anything he needs. Or he can teleport himself in the next round and um, apply acid burns. Or why not paint the whole ground in misery and let the opponent suffer from it. Uh, as long as it's turn 1, I have double chance to uh, silence a, uh, the juggler, and, unless of course he has silence protection. So I'm thinking right now, teleporting Licorice looks really really good. Especially if I get to give him, her a little bit of uh, a little bit of buffing first. So, immediately start with holy protection and the buff, wild power. Akaya has been key in almost every match she has been in. The opponent goes straight away. Yeah, this is what was very weird to me. The opponent goes straight away for the miracle use. And then I realized I have a billion range everywhere. And all the heals, basically all the heals, have already been used. So yeah, I'll, I'll take this offer. Um, if you check here... She would... Uh, he would only be in range of Tiaris and of uh, of Claret, but there's no way a Claret with a punch would come to attack, right? Even with a faction buff from from Zeri, this is probably suicide because after all, Rin right now has like 1500 attack and uh, he may not be in a defensive tile, but he's transformed, so that's even 30% less damage. Uh, I was just outside of range of, Ra of Landius, that's very happy. And of course, uh, Juggler could teleport first and then get the kill with Claret, but uh, that's that's probably a little bit uh, too too far forward, right? So one, two, three, it literally only hits him, doesn't even lock him down, and all of my units are still ready to attack. So I'm guessing opponent thought maybe that's a little bit too much. Spreads away. Another thing that makes me happy is the the um, self heal. Sorry, the, the transformation of heal into damage. So I decide then to move forward as far as I can because I know I have no threats to fear and push Licorice all the way forward. Opponent then exactly goes for the jump with the Dogo now that there are more targets to hit. But I move my Liko in a place where she could not be pushed. But alas, surprise! The Dogo actually has Spirit Boots. That's a little bit crazy, unlucky. But I'm still in such a prime position to heal everyone back to full as they can that I don't mind this at all. I decide to go for a mass attack. I'm still having turn priority, right? No one is dead. And this... Uh, this Tiaris is currently silenced. So I think, okay, then it's a time to kill the juggler. Let them heal. 
because I am going for multiple attacks. And every time I do so, Claret also takes a little bit of damage. Yaris cleanses uh, um, the healing transform, but she still has heal disabled. So all I have to do is just continue pushing against Juggler and eventually he just dies. And yes, there is a Zerida here ready to kill anything, but I don't mind. I have reached all of what I needed. I have liberated uh, Rian from incarceration basically. And I still get to use Thousand Arrows first, which should decimate Claret. So I'm not really worried about her anymore. I get to give Rian again the Varna buff, that was very important. Claret suicides herself, and opponent thinks that was quite enough. And I think it's true because Rian at that point was just super powered up with everything he ever needed. Okay. Hide again. And we go on to the next match. Alright, so starts once again. I see a Rosential, I ban a Rosential. Opponent very smartly bans my um, my Akaya. Fix SP Elwin, which always puts me in a bind. Like, how do I respond to this? I end up getting rid of Dogo. I thought maybe I can go for some AoE damage in this case uh, and do some good. Follows up with a Yusuke, which makes proceed, pr like slow killing of units a lot harder. He heals himself so much, so I decide, okay, I'm going to remove all your ways to buff him, so we, he would have to buff himself, which for me is fine. Uh, Serida, once again, doesn't match with any of the other people, and while she has all the legs that she needs, uh, everyone here is basically not really happy about attacking turn 1, and I'm usually very happy about turn 1. I put a Joshua, thinking if I can carry him along with the dog, I can basically buff any of the remaining people or Bozo can buff himself, so maybe I'm doing something good. Bring a shell here, try to punch some people. I think I missed the Wyler here. Uh, Wyler is one of the strongest things against what I'm trying to do because he gets the heal before the damage actually starts going, so anyone with last rights gets to heal back. Uh, he dismisses a lot of debuffs, he can die and dismiss even more debuffs, continues to heal for 10 million years. Uh, Wilder is in general a giant problem for me. So I decide I'm in trouble here. Even though I have dog, even though I have everything, I need to start buffing first, going slower my, than my opponent because I already heard uh, faction buff going off, transformations soon to come, and so on. I checked if, uh, if Rian wanted to transform, that would have given me the hint to stay back for even longer, but he doesn't transform, so this is a match where I am in a very strange position. I leave my Ares as far forward as I can and try to up a little bit forward. I want to give myself here at least an opportunity to threaten any opponent's unit and I know I could possibly kill a uh, an Elwin with a Shaltier. So if opponent has to choose between killing one or the other then at least maybe I can try to make that work. I move the Ares up being protected, and opponent very smartly moves away, the uh, uh, Elwin noticing that he was in absolute danger. Goes for the transformation, and my problem is right now, a lot of my people are very out of range. I just jump in with Juggler, hoping to put some problems on the opponent. But it doesn't really work, opponent has Wyler very happily there, so... Tries to get the Juggler, does not get the kill, so good tank. I tried to snipe here the Zeddy, but sadly it's not enough. Uh, which is usually a shame. I actually did not check. No, it was still a lot of health. That's, that's usually weird because uh, Joshua can delete some Zeddy's, but it did not want to happen this time. Opponent does tactical retreat at this point, uh, an extremely good move. I don't even get first turn, opponent was very careful to kill a unit that has already acted, and then Sakura disappears here. Twing. Even with the first strike, uh, which I find kinda weird, first strike doesn't happen here, but whatever, what can I do? I attack the other one and I notice, damn, that's still, that's still the heal from... Uh... Yeah, I get quite lucky here. So. 
He still has the heal, right? From uh, from Wyler going for him. Um, so any attack I would do on this would probably not result in a kill unless I'm using a skill. This led me to thinking, should I use Ares full power? Should I just try to get a normal kill? I don't even remember what I do. But I think I go for a normal attack with skill. No, you know what? I don't even do that. I'm such a rebel. Right, because I had the opportunity from... Yes, that was the gamble. I remember now. I had I had the first movement, right? And because I get, uh, I get the act again right here, I thought, okay, there's one of two options. I have not used my 3 sis skill, but I don't know if I can kill an Elwyn uh, after the heal with just a normal attack. So I will use it here and then go and kill Zerida, right? Easy. And remember that was the gamble I wanted to take. Like, look at the heal, it's so ridiculous. Wyler, I hate Wyler. In any case, I get a kill. I get a Blood Frenzy. I'm having no more faction buff. I think this is probably what was my downfall. I thought, come on, it's just a Zeri. How hard is it to kill? Well, apparently it's very hard to kill. And that made me super sad. I knew after that the game was very much over. Like, without that, maybe we could have traded a few blows until things work out in my favor or not. Uh, but that was really rough. I do get the kill eventually, but Joshua is so hurt that uh, all Rion has to do is just spit on him a little bit. So I just run away. That that was a close match, but a shame indeed. Then we go on. And yet another bout with Creamy Mummy, who has so far beaten me every single time. So uh, Every time I think, ha, ah, my BAM pick is super superior, I'm going to win, absolutely. And I lose every time because his play is so solid. Creamy Mummy gets me every time. And for those that cannot read Japanese, Katakana is Kuri... Kuri... Mi... Mami. See? You learn something every day. Alright. Ares, Hobo versus Dog. And then I think, uh, are the roles reversing? Is he rushing me while I'm the person with the tank and the heal? Tank and heal? Kinda? My god. I'm always in such a weird situation. Zeddy comes in. And I'm in this weird position where I'm basically having to counter tank everything. Uh, so I bring my own Ares trying to have some, so some sort of control over here. Uh, I do like having a Liko around for uh, when opponent has a Hobo as well, because I get to unpaint the ground when I want to have a surprise turn. That usually ends up paying off a lot. So I pick all of the longest legs that I can. And I think in the end I go with a Bozo. Yeah. To try to see if I can make something happen. Uh, all of these units actually, except Ares. Um, you know what? Never mind, forget it. Hobo is gonna have a blast, but I do at least save Liko and uh, Bozel from having to play the extra movement. Alright, so I begin with the classics. Keep move. Keep buffs. Try to fish for a breeze here. I do get one, that makes me happy. Because uh, Varna actually hits quite hard. No joke. It would be way better if I had... Um, if I had already a buff. But alas, I do not, so I am not worried. And yes, it's true that um, she gets to die after doing something like this. But in general, it's not the worst trade uh, to trade a, a Varna for any other unit that you get. She already did her damage, right? That's the whole gist of it. And then of course, whenever an Alice comes to punch my juggler, I think, well, that juggler is very dead. Goes for the AoE. And destroys me. This gives me a slight opportunity, which is equally dangerous as the opportunity normally. Um, that is to and that is to try to stop this Aryan rod. Uh, but instead, I decide to go for Zeri because uh, Zeri could absolutely kill someone else. While Aryan rod will probably have to fight for it. Um, so I I choose to go for some damage there. And then Aryan does something very smart here. 
which is hurt herself through my troops. I really didn't think Liko would deal so much damage, but she did, and people disappear. So goodbye, Aryan. Uh, sorry, goodbye, Liko. It's just what happened. I did bring double AoE on her because I brought faction buff from Bozel. That means uh, I got to do stuff like this. But then Varna just dies. Bozel tries to go for a sleep. I know I have first turn next turn, I think. Is that the case? Yes, it is the case. Um, but opponents still have a million tricks up their sleeves. So, can I really do something about this? I throw down an AoE, hope for all the silences, damages in the world that could possibly exist. I get absolutely nothing, except the silence on Aris. Who cares about that? Uh, but then I notice I gave her, a, I gave opponent a perfect ultimate construct. Punch me. And then I just dies from it, which is ridiculous. Wave Whisper away. And then there's even a, a sleep target here that's just waiting to kill me. At this point, I will try to hit Arian Rod, but Arian Rod even has double turns, so... I decide, you know what? Take the loss. I can accept when it's over. Alright. Now we're getting close. So, um, I believe this was around 1870, 1880, so it was, it was not quite the final boss, but I was getting like two, two matches away, so I think I really have to start focusing, I really want to get this Langerser, so I will have to play harder. So here we go! Ban the Akka of the opponent, let them pick their healers if they want. Uh, I, I will find my way to deal with them. Goes for Juggler first. And I thought, like, if they have both Juggler and and uh, Rosential, I can only get rid of one of them anyway. So might as well let them have first pick. I will just ban whatever they kind of pick in the first go. I go for my own Akka, and uh, of course my strongest suit immediately gets banned. That makes sense. Opponent gets Hobo very quickly, so I thought, okay, if that's going to be your only heal, then I'll take care of that from now. And pick my own uh, Hiei. Hiei is the perfect third choice after Ares and, uh, and Rian. With Akka you basically get to hit almost everyone. If I can leave the opponent with no heals that makes me happy. Usually if they have no more painting skills other than Holo for example. Which is my own Liko. Opponent gets rid of the teleport. Goes for Julia. I am very happy to see a Julia. I know she's insanely strong but in most situations she's just too short legged to do something. Breeze triggers change this a lot, that's why if I ever make Julia, I will put, probably put Breeze on. Joshua here, with the movement speed, is probably going to be able to bleed some stuff. So I think it is a great idea to bring him along. And Avarna here to throw some AoE. Makes everyone happy. Dog goes for a classic opening. I go fishing. Is there a Breeze? No, there's not. But I think I did grab a 20% damage buff here on the, on Varna. Grab the buff and then decide what we do from here. Opponent has to start actually with a with a faction buff. This gives me the opportunity to start marking things. Do an AOE. Uh, I leave Aryan Rod here on purpose out of the AOE because I don't want her to be anywhere close to the double turn. And there was really nothing to this spell that really mattered. Like sure, maybe I would have gotten the the one um, attack buff, but that was unlikely. Here's the secret. The 3C from Hiei cannot be immunized against. That's why he's amazingly good at killing Julius. Uh, in his uh, ninja form, you cannot be uh, demon for this, but you get it. I go for an AoE with Joshua. Opponent tries to hit everyone but forgets about Hiei. Hiei currently is uh, still able to dodge his AoEs, so always gotta pay attention to that. I go for a specific hit where I don't touch this, uh, this juggler. Opponent goes for an attempt to kill and suddenly does not get the kill on Hiei. That makes me very happy. I get to drop my own AoE. I am still standing away from Hiei so that he actually has to be attacked on person. Opponent again misses the point of uh, how Hiei's uh, talent works. 
but at least paints away all of the darkness. But now that he moved away, I get an opportunity to attack. And that goes for a super easy kill. Gets me a little bit of health, and then I'm less afraid of attacking into Dogo. And the cool thing is, if I attack into Dogo still with the Dragon Form and 3C, um, I have a chance of putting the debuff. But I don't put the debuff. So that's sad. Given again. And... Give a mass attack, getting ready for maximum damage, and I just attack. <laughs> Get a new wolf. Happy Aka is six stars now, so that's very good. Opponent uh, goes for an earthquake, trying to silence and trying to debuff. Uh, gets Aka, I don't care. Dragon breath, paint as much as I can. And if they want to take an extra turn, they can, but they would have to stand on special tiles. Opponent deletes two people here. And then goes for an attack on uh, on Liko, but forgets that the troops are pretty good at this. I go for an aim, and it's time to weaken this, uh, this puzzle a lot. I like the odds of a puzzle against a wolf. After all, the wolf is a person, right? It has literally the stats of, uh, of a strong attacker, because that's who got killed. Uh, Aryan Rod here gets uh, away with another kill and even gets to run away. An opponent here decides to go for the double turn, tries to attack me, but without faction buff, Varna has still way too much health. And all I need to do is very carefully stand on the correct tile, shoot a thousand arrows, and kill the last enemy unit. Great! And on we go! Um, I hope this was the correct match. Yep, I think it is. Okay, so next match. I actually, I see a dog in this match and I like it even less than Rosenciel. I realize if opponent wants to go for Rosenciel, that's fine. They they do have this tank, but I could have removed that and someone else. In this case, I chose to go for all the heals, Rosenciel and also Elwin who can move 10 billion tiles because he's OP now. Opponent bans uh, my obvious following picks, but uh, leaves me with an Ares that I'm very happy to pick. Uh, Ares or Hiei? Ares indeed. Um, Ares in this particular case would not play to punch um, Albedo, because Albedo has two or three different ways to reduce incoming damage, and I really don't want to fizzle out on such a, an important movement. So I bring Ares probably with AoE, and then I reinforce this idea with uh, Heal the Knight from Egbert. Opponent brings her own shell, uh, his own shell tan, shell faniel. No, shell tear. I cannot speak anymore. And uh, with that, I get an inspiration to go a little bit darker. That gives me my own bozel. And I believe, if I remember correctly, a Varna. Varna turn one is very good friends with uh, with Aka. So I make sure to take advantage of this. I have decided for this map, uh, flying is not so important, so I give Puzzle the walking troops anyway. They are so good at taking a punch to the face that they make me happy. And I decide this is the match where I will use the turn 2 teleport actually. So I calculate all the tiles needed to stay away from the opponent, even with an again. Uh, and it makes me really happy to say that I can achieve it. So get hold protection, explode the person. Thank you, Wolf, for your participation. Here's a buff for everyone. I have multiple choices here. Um, she may not be in range of Varna, but everyone else will absolutely get a hit. And I here now tell the opponent that they have to choose between healing themselves or healing everyone else, depending on what they brought. So they actually choose to heal everyone else. That leaves them for a very low um, Florencia. And because I'm mostly AoE, I don't care that they heal their troops. I see an opportunity here. If I can disappear a Bozel, I'll take a disappearance of a Bozel. Um, I see that opponent actually has a skill, a 3C on Zeri. That means if she really wants to be uh, participating with an attack skill, uh, she would need to transform first. And if she transforms first, that gives me an entire turn. If she doesn't, then basically she's attacking at half power with a normal attack and very few opportunities come out of that. Ares disappears, but he already did his job. 
Uh, and then I realized, wait, that's a living person. You know what? He's gonna have to pay another turn for this. So how about everyone disappears? Acid burns here make a lot of difference. Florencia disappears even though she healed her troops, that makes no difference. I earn a very random silence here that is undeserved, but I'll take it. It doesn't really make much of a difference. But at this point, everyone has been marked for death. And the plan comes through Keike Kuduru. There's no more opponent. Alright. Another win. Then on we go to the next match. And... Yeah, here we go. I really like this match. It was very, very fun. So, I get first pick. Opponent bans my Akka. And this map, this map is very particular. Uh, especially if you have a Leon. Leon can do some crazy things here, which indeed is... He can basically reach anyone. Uh, I don't think there's a setup in this map that Leon cannot reach to. So if you have a tank, you have to put the tank in passive range of protecting everyone. That is still an amazing pick, so Ares first. But once Ares was secured, Leon is not usually a quick ban, so I was very happy to take a Leon here. Opponent takes... Uh, forever, forever forget the names. Elena? No. Brenda? No. <laughs> I'll check her name later. Person who can chivalry twice. That's basically it. Uh, I grab my own Liko. I see that the opponent has uh, no way to paint the ground remaining, so I start removing all the heals that I can. Uh, my next target will be um, Deedlead, of course, if she doesn't get picked. I go for a uh, an Egbert. Egbert here will be very useful. He can block the center, he can teleport people, he can do a lot of things, and once he deploys everything he can do, I'm already happy with him. Between Bozel and Varna here, there were cool choices, uh, but without uh, without the buff from sorry and Leon sorry off. Without the buff from uh, Akaya, Varna cannot reach turn one to the opponent unless they move forward on purpose. I just wanted to see to show everyone Leon with bikes is completely imbalanced, and in a map like this, he can go all the way five forward and then move into any of the two directions. So actually you can choose, and once you do so, look at the range from here, because it's 1, 2, and then 1, 2, 3, you could reach this position, this position, this, this, this. Basically, if you can hit 5 positions already, it means there's no way for the opponent to hide on turn 1 at 1. So, game starts, I, I say hello to my opponent, actually that's not the thing, I say hello everyone, <laughs> and I attack. So, Leon goes. Chivalry, I decide of all of these, Alustriel is probably the one who can kill twice, right? Because everyone else has to trade in a way or another. Uh, Alustriel can probably just go like uh, hit, come back, hit, come back. That's super annoying. Then I notice, okay, opponent, opponent is in a strange position right now because they decided not to kill Leon, they have to kill Leon. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to block the front lines and then teleport Ares to a better position, because right now, one, two, three, four, he could only get, like, Julia or something. So, what happens is, I have to do some math here, and then I grab uh, Rosalia, that's her name, Rosalia. And then I realize, okay, Chivalry 1 from here, one, two, three. Chivalry 2 is 3 movement, right? But uh, forests are pretty bad for, for horses. So they would only be able to hit either uh, Egbert or um, or the illusion. Uh, but the thing is, because I always hate miscalculating, I'm not sure if I can teleport Ares up here. So I think I just go for the safe play, put him behind Egbert. Just, if you want to get to me, you can destroy Egbert, but you won't be able to get further. And then he puts down the sword. I, I, we both literally stop here. Even with the priest trigger, we are both like, oh god. But we both check and uh, Rosalia can actually not move out of the forest in any way. So my plan worked out. He can disappear all the Egberts that he wants, I don't care. Uh, Egbert did his job by enabling Ares right now. I move forward. 
it's time for a fearless hurricane and I get to actually punch very important people here. So Julia and Elwin. And uh, sure Elwin won't die from this, but at the very least I'm already uh, putting some good starting damage if I get to attack him again. And of course uh, I get punched here by Ledin, who actually gets the kill. That was very surprising to me, but you know what? I'm not gonna argue. I, I thought he was dead already, so I'm actually happy that Leon was killed instead of Ares. Ares still can punch a lot. There's a cool thing here. Because I teleported him one tile away, um, Liko can now move in here and just spread out her, her bio. So I give her a faction buff. <laughs> I noticed that because of chivalry it's immune to silence. And then boom. I get a silence. And a silence on an Elwin that has not yet chivalry is just amazing. So, opponent tries to punch a uh, normal punch a Bozo, but Bozo here had full faction buff and also transformation and. Uh, no, not transformation. And uh, warlocks, and the warlocks decided not to die. Elwin dies twice to his own deaths. Uh, Ledin tries to punch me, but there's no choice. And then. Two simple auto-attacks lead me to a very strong position. Opponent thinks that uh, Ledin can fight through this thing, uh, but I'm just taking my own time. I had prepared a backup plan in case I wanted to stop Rosalia, which was this summon. Uh, so I don't have sleep, otherwise I would have gone in much more fervently. But I don't really remember the cooldown on uh, Ledin's, uh, on Ledin's skill. It's not that I, I don't remember the cooldown, I did not count the cooldown. So I just stay still, right? As long as Leding is more than uh, the tiles away that he needs to teleport mm, a person to me, I should be fine. So now that I can finally attack, I move forward. I can wait all the turns, right? I don't mind. And the fog is chasing him. So then I go for Fearless Hurricane. I had the AoE skill, if you remember. I try to pull him out of the forest in case I get lucky. But at this point I notice, well, there's nothing he can do. With uh, buff, deny, uh, even if he tries to use his 3C, it won't matter. So I decide instead to heal, healing is better here. And marking the tiles with heal, heals everyone a little bit. So opponent just moves away. I don't know why at this point they decided to go all the way. But for me it was a very important match, I was not going to give up. Maybe they were fishing for a uh, disconnect, who knows. Uh, but the fact is, I end up getting the kill, and with this is actually the match where I ended up getting Langriser. So this was the road to Langriser, and uh, whew, I, I took like a very long break after that, celebrating and just taking it easy. And with that, we go on to the last match. Which happened way later into the night, where I thought, you know what? I can now play for leisure, right? I made it to Langriser. Celebration. So in we go against Limon. Not Lemon, it's not the same. It's the Spanish Limon. <laughs> so, opponent probably recognized me at this point. I think they even said uh, hello everyone in the in the ban pick selection phase. Uh, I think my box is very revealing. Uh, if anyone even remotely knows me or have heard of me, probably can tell that this is my box. Uh, I think I may be one of the very few people running Ainz altogether, so... Wait, Ainz is not even here, right? Yes, okay, he's already been replaced by, by Leon. I'm still sharding Ainz, so maybe he'll be back when he's 6 stars. But in any case, still quite easy to tell it's me. Uh, <laughs> for the distinct lack of tanks. Uh, could be Michusak, I guess, but I'm not running Toguro Brothers, so... It's not them. Uh, opponent goes for a very dark, heavy composition. I instead choose to go for a dark heavy composition. And they still had a tank going, but uh, it's not a lot of heals. So I make sure that they have no extra heals. And uh, I see the Shelfaniel coming. Shelfaniel is a supreme problem against Liko. So I have to make sure I'm never putting Liko in range of Shelfaniel's mega explosion. So I choose all of the things that normally destroy Shelfaniel's, which are long range attacks. She has. She has no protection beyond the Maidens, so if you get to remove the Maiden protection, uh, it's very, very easy to kill Shufania. Fishing for uh, Breeze, as always, gets nothing. 
Sometimes that's what happens. I start spreading out because uh, I, I'm even counting tiles here. I just... I checked first that Shefaniel didn't have the buff, then I also checked for Breeze, and then I also counted all the tiles to see when could she hit me. I think I'm allowing here for Varna to get hit, because I want something to be able to happen after she attacks. Um, but with that I'm happy. And then opponent goes here for the Hail Mary, um, which I kinda saw coming, which is why I never moved my Ares. And because of this, basically I'm always last to move. And uh, even though I gave Ares my AoE skill, because I thought, you know what, if I get to explode around these people, I'll get a very cool thing. Uh, I go forward with an auto attack and hope for the best. And then I see this much life. And usually between the fixed damage and the AoE, you get to kill this damage. So happy with the kill, I fall back and things are looking a lot better right now. And especially because the teleport got used, then I realized, oh, wait, this is super smart. So you get to actually teleport again. I realized I cannot let this happen. My only shot, ha, literally, thousand shots, is to kill the illusion right now. And I do get the kill on the illusion, so that makes me... Uh, if, if Varna dies now, her job is complete. I make sure that I move away my, uh, <laughs> my poor Liko so that she doesn't get destroyed. An opponent goes buffing once again. I decide I can stay back. If I get hit by the AoE, it's fine. I offer three targets to make it more appealing. I know none of three should die immediately, even though the thing hits ridiculously hard. Uh, but with this, even after the dispels, I get to do buffing AoE and probably get a chance to kill uh, to kill uh, Shafanyo. Uh, she's also in range of Ares. I don't know if I calculated that one, but it was pretty good. Dark Demise here deletes one person. An opponent then has to choose uh, if they want to protect their Shilfaniel or stay in range of... Uh, stay in range of their tank. It gives me an opportunity here to silence everyone that I can. Get a clock trigger, get an extra silence trigger. Wind Whisper deals even more damage. Does not get the kill like I wanted. But Limon realizes uh, at this point it's gonna be very very hard to come back from this. Uh, so yeah, that's how we got to the current score. That was the journey to here. And I gotta say, I don't think I will ever go, go back to try any other meta that is not Rush. We are looking forward to tomorrow, because actually that's when we get Vanna. And uh, I'll be rolling for him so hard. I think I have, I have enough tickets to make sure I get him. Thanks to the recent events all being farmed. Limoncito dead. <laughs> yep, indeed that it was. But it was a lot of fun to get here. Uh, I, I really don't think I can play anything else than Rush and I hope that I'm getting better at it after failing for a, a while. We made it to Langrisser, now the next target is to make it to Pios. Uh, Dango told me it's around uh, 1980, so if I accumulate like three more wins, I could probably just stay there for the reminder of the time and, and try not to lose any more points. I don't care if I don't make it to the playoffs. Uh, I think it's amazing that I already made it this far. I really thought I wasn't going to be able to, be able to do it. But here we are with the happy news. So with this, Act 10 of Season 6 comes to an end. Thank you all very much for watching and I hope you enjoy. Goodbye.